Citizens of America. Civil War is British filmmaker Alex Garland's fourth feature film as a director. The film follows journalists as they make their way from New York City to Washington, D.C., along a heavily detoured path caused by an ongoing American Civil War. The film stars a trio of Kirsten Dunst, Wagner Mora, and Kaylee Spaney, each of whose capacity for thrill-seeking, truth-telling, and commitment to their craft oscillates throughout the 109-minute runtime. This is not a film I loved. I had issues with the storytelling and the pacing, some of which I'll talk about in this video. However, I thought the cinematography, sound design, and performances, for the most part, were very strong. Garland is a filmmaker with big ideas, and big ideas can leave viewers with questions. I'm Greg with The Scene I Like, and these are three questions for Alex Garland's Civil War. My first question revolves around Dunst and Spaney's characters, both of who are photojournalists. Dunst's character Lee shoots her photographs in color, and Spaney's character Jesse shoots hers in black and white film. So, why the difference? Well, from a very basic fluidity of storytelling standpoint, it might just be that way so that we know whose photos are whose. The film routinely cuts to the in-camera images Jesse and Lee are shooting, so differentiating between their two styles helps the viewer to know whose photo they're seeing at what time. But let's think about this way too hard. Lee's a hardened pro. She's been doing this for decades, and she has a few different cameras, including one with an extremely long lens. And a quick side note, I really like the few moments in the movie where she wielded her camera with a long lens more like a weapon and used it as a long-range scope. But back to my point, color and photography adds context, time, place, and era, whereas black and white is more timeless. Black and white is also more artistic. We even see Jessie developing her film while Lee prefers digital. It almost seems like an inverse relationship, a younger person using an older technology but perhaps it's a means for Jessie to insert her own vision into her photojournalism. The first time we see Jessie, it's at a riot in New York City, and she's gotten herself way too close to the action. This also happens at the end of the film, but we'll talk more about that later. Jessie shoots stylistically and up close and personal. Meanwhile, Lee shoots in color and tells the story exactly as it is. The long lens that Lee has allows her at times to shoot from a safe distance, not inserting herself too much into the story. While the black and white versus color choice by Garland is likely to help aid in telling the story visually, I think there's a chance it's meant to speak to the two characters' mindsets as well. Lee is there to tell the story. Jesse is there to tell her story. And I don't think either way is wrong. It's just two different approaches. My second question revolves around a scene that I really kind of didn't like upon first viewing. It actually happens right after another scene I took issue with. So the first thing I'm talking about is when they're caught in a shootout on the front lawn of the mansion with all those Christmas decorations. I think I get why that scene was included in the movie. It's to show that in this war-torn America, you could die in the most banal way possible, not even fighting in some great conflict, and that because of this, many people have taken on this mindset of kill or be killed. It was just a lot of screen time to get this point across, and it didn't move the story along. Why show the mansion, kill the person in it, and then not go inside? Side note, I did notice a quick homage to the Virgin Suicides directed by Sofia Coppola, where Dunst was lying in the grass. It was a pretty similar shot. But anyway, then there's an awkward cut to them back on the road, and eventually two friends from the press pull up next to them, and some kind of backcountry game of chicken ensues. The reporter from Hong Kong jumps into Lee's car, and Jesse decides to jump into the other car. Why? Why spend time with any of this? Well, let's think about it. Prior to the scene, Jessie's been seen as scared, overwhelmed, and generally just in over her head. But in this moment, her character takes a turn. Now this is right around the midpoint of the movie, so this makes sense from a storytelling standpoint. In the moment she changes the car, we see Lee become upset, almost maternal. Meanwhile, Jessie has shed her cautious overcoat and embraced her inner thrill seeker. From this point forward, her character takes on a new form, and this is the moment it begins. I think it also shows that she's naive, perhaps aware that bad things can happen, but not yet aware that they can happen to her. Now, the next scene with Jesse Plemons is obviously going to shatter this illusion. This is a good example of show, but don't tell storytelling. And while I don't like the time spent and the mechanics behind it, Garland does a good job in the scene developing his two main characters without telling you a lot that things are happening, they're changing. He shows you. Lee and Jesse have both begun to change. They are two cars careening on a collision course towards the capital. My third and final question revolves around the ending. As the trio reaches the capital, we begin to see Lee lose much of her steely resolve. The death of her colleague Sammy has heavily affected her, and the weight of her past traumas has stopped her dead in her tracks. Morris' character Joel ushers Lee through the DC war zone, very similar to how he had to with Jesse earlier in the film. As the president's fake decoy plan to escape the White House fails, Lee's instincts kick in bringing her back to life and pushing the group towards the White House. She leads the charge, and then an epic shootout occurs. 
Before the president is captured, we find Jessie once again too close to the action, forcing Lee to step in like she does in the beginning of the movie. Lee shoves Jessie out of the line of fire, which ultimately leads to Lee's death. My third question, why does Lee have to die? Now, ultimately, I really don't think this is some heavy-handed metaphor about how journalists and the previous generations had to literally take bullets so the generation after them can succeed. That just seems a little too, like I said, heavy-handed. I also don't think Lee's death is to get some shocking, cheap audience reaction. I think Lee dies to finish telling the story. And the story of Garland's Civil War isn't really about a country divided or left versus right politics. It's about the journalists who tell the stories inside of these conflicts, and more importantly, how they tell them. Lee's character presents throughout the film as jaded and unflappable, but in the most important moments, Lee shows that to tell stories and to report on them, you have to feel. Conflicts aren't black and white, they're full of color. Lee knows this. She's not out to seek thrills or insert herself into a story. She's there to observe and report. Lee dies to close the loop on the film's big idea. Her selfless act shows Jesse that recklessly pursuing photo opportunities is less important than having an understanding for the moment you're photographing. Once you understand, then you can feel. And once you can feel, then you can tell the story. Garland is a filmmaker can feel, which allows him to tell this story. He doesn't tell it perfectly, but he's not telling it for cheap thrills either. It's live, in color, and a little messy. But I guess that's how life is most of the time too. I'm Greg with the scene I like. Thanks for watching. Now, let's try not to have a civil war in the comments.